Hello everyone. Today we are going to do an experiment on determining the achromic point of alpha amylase. We know that alpha amylase is an hydrolase enzyme. Two different types are there: endohydrolase and exohydrolase. This enzyme endohydrolase, which is mainly an uh, amylase, which will be acting on alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages internally, breaking the glycosidic bonds to give you the fragments of the oligosaccharides, which can be called as the dextrins. So further action of the same enzyme can continue on these dextrins to form the end products which can be the maltose or it can be the glucose molecule. Whereas the other type of the endo, I mean the other type of the hydrolase enzyme which is called as the exohydrolase can act on the starch substrate to form the end products which are going to be the glucose or it can be the maltose molecule. Because the action of this enzyme is from the reducing and breaking the alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage starting from the terminal end of a polymer chain of the starch. So that is why the end product formed will be either maltose or it can be the glucose molecule. But today's experiment we are going to do to determine the achromic point about the alpha amylase enzyme. So the source for the enzyme what we have taken for this experiment is a fungal alpha amylase which is generally called as a diastase enzyme. So we have taken the commercially available enzyme. So that is being taken over here. We have gone with the preparation of 1% of the enzyme. So we have taken 0.25 gram of the fungal diastase or the alpha amylase enzyme and we have diluted it and mixed it with the buffer solution which is phosphate buffer 20 millimolar with a pH of 7 the, sub, the stock enzyme was being prepared. So we make sure that it is going to be 1 gram in 100 ml of the phosphate buffer. So since it is an enzyme what we have prepared the stock enzyme is being incubated or kept inside the ice so that enzyme activity will not be lost. lost. The other requirements for this experiment for the achromic point determination is the starch. We have taken 0.5 percentage of the starch. The next requirement is a phosphate buffer whose pH is 7, 20 millimolar. That is the strength of the buffer. And the next reagent required is a iodine reagent which is required for confirming the experiment. The various other requirements for this experiment let us have a tie where we have marked the times in the range of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the different uh, times are being entered over here and a set of test tubes in order to prepare the reaction mixture. So we have the micro pipettes to take the required aliquots along with the micro pipette tips. So to begin with this experiment let us first understand that whenever you take the substrate that is a starch when it is acting on the enzyme it will form the product. So since it is going to be the alpha amylase which is an endohydrolase which is acting on it. So when you take the starch and add the iodine during the intermediary in reactions we can find that instead of getting a dark blue color we will start to get the light blue color and the color will start to fade enough to indicating that the enzyme is acting on the substrate starch to form the end product molecule. So our aim is to find out what is the achromic point at which point at which time in minutes the enzyme is completely degrading the substrate starch to form its end product. So that is where we divine, define the term as a achromic point. So in order to perform this experiment we have already have shown you that we are taking the stock enzyme but direct stock enzyme we are not going to use it. So we are going to dilute the enzyme. So one of the diluted enzyme is 1 in 10 dilution we have done. So 1 ml of the enzyme was taken and diluted with 9 ml of the phosphate buffer and it also be is placed inside the ice. Now we are going to prepare the reaction mixture. So our students are there who are BC, BSc second day, BC and DC students who are going to perform this experiment. So step number one we are going to take the test tubes. So one test tube is being taken. So we are going to write the label as reaction mixture. So the reaction mixture what we are going to take is 2 ml of the substrate that is the starch and with 2 ml of the phosphate buffer and we are going to add 0 0.4 ml of the diluted enzyme. So the moment you add the enzyme make sure that they, we are going to have the timings, times which has been kept in minutes is working simultaneously so that from the reaction mixture at every interval we are going to take a drop of the reaction mixture and place it on the tile so that we are able to find the 
end point. So, student Prerna is taking 1 ml of the starch. So, in the reaction mixture tube, 1 ml is being transferred. So, 1 more ml will be added into the same uh, test tube, 1 ml, so that the total volume the, of the substrate, that is 0 0.5 percent of the starch, what we have taken is going to be 2 ml. So, next after adding the starch, we are going to add the buffer. Again, it is going to be 2 ml of the buffer solution. So, it is phosphate buffer 20 millimolar which is also containing 0.9 percent of sunlight. So, its pH is 7 which has been used for this experiment. So, the reaction mixture will contain 2 ml of 0.5 percent of starch and we are going to add 2 ml of the phosphate buffer. So, we have taken the 2 initial components required for the experiment that is 2 ml of starch and 2 ml of the phosphate buffer. Now, we are going to take 0.4 ml of the diluted enzyme that to 1 in 10 diluted enzyme. So, as it is 0.4 ml, so this is the diluted enzyme. We all know that enzyme is sensitive to changes in temperature. So, we have kept in the eyes. So, so, we are going to add now. The moment we add, our students are ready by taking the noting down the time so that we are going to start. So, reaction, we have prepared the reaction mixture. The enzyme has been added to the substrate. So, slide just take one dropper and add and check out the zero minute what is the color we are going to get. So, there we have marked all these things. So, we can see that on the tile we are having the 0 minute. So, she is just keeping a drop and we are adding the iodine to it. Just a drop of iodine will be added to it. So, you can note down the change in the color. So, it is very clear that at the 0 minute when we have added the starch that is a reaction mixture containing starch and when it is reacted with the iodine we are able to see that there is formation of the purple color. So, we know that starch is a huge polysaccharide. It contains um, alpha 14, alpha 16 glycosidic linkages. So, when we add the iodine, the iodine goes and interferes and forms complexes within the starch molecule resulting in the formation of the dark purple color or the purple, dark uh, blue color. So, in general to, to make a small confirmation also to see whether the starch what we have taken is working, you can take starch a drop and add the iodine and check out whether the starch what we have taken is reacting with the iodine. So, just to make sure about it. So, by the time the next minute has already been completed. So, this is the next one minute few drops from the reaction mixture has been added. So, now you can see there is a drastic change in the color. So, you saw that the 0 minute when we initially added the enzyme it was purple color but after 1 minute we can see that the intensity of the color has decreased. So, that is showing that the enzyme which we have taken alpha amylase has started to act on the substrate starch forming the intermediary uh, intermediary products which mainly includes the dextrin. So, we can see that the intensity of the color has decreased. So, like this every in time interval of 1 minute we can take from the reaction mixture and add continuously the iodine drops to check out what is the change in the color that is going to happen. So, we are adding one drop of starch and we are going to add a drop of iodine to check what is the initial color when substrate reacts that is a starch is a substrate reacts with the iodine. So, we have finished with the second minute also it is completed. So, you can see that the drop is placed and now you can see that there is a good change in the intensity of the color. So, dark purple 0 minute has become light and still the intensity of the color has decreased. So, that indicates that the 2 ml of the starch what we have given is being acted upon by the enzyme continuously converting them to form the shorter oligosaccharide chains which when they react with the iodine the color obtained will start to decrease. So, once we get into the next minute, let us see what will be the color that our students are going to get.
so it's a very simple test which can be done so that the economic point so the economic point once you get it with that economic point we can decide what would be the incubation time required for alpha amylase when we are doing the quantitative analysis of the enzyme activity by using the 3,5 dinitrosalicylic acid method so now you can see that still the color is forming but the intensity of that purple color has started to decrease. So slightly we can find that it is in the form of a brownish color. So that has been obtained at the time interval of 3 minutes. So after some time we will be watching what is going to happen at the 4th minute. So as time is increasing. So the enzyme is continuously acting on the substrate. So same activity you can find it even on the saliva which is again a salivary alpha amylase. So this enzyme will continuously act on the food when you are chewing the food the saliva is secreted which will be acting on the starch which is present and start to form the intermediary metabolites. So that metabolites further will go to your uh, stomach and then complete digestion of the sugar or the starch will be finished. So now we can see that in the fourth minute still there is color is there but the intensity of color is little bit very less. So when you compare to the zero minute color and observe it at the fourth minute color there is a drastic difference in the change in the color which indicates that the substrate is being acted upon by the enzyme still. Okay. So to generally to make it easier for the students to understand that there is a change in the color we have to compare it and always so that we know exactly where is the end point when we have reached it. So generally we can take a drop of iodine and put it at one point to which compare the color just one drop. So you can see now this is the color of iodine. So when the reaction mixture is kept we have to get the color of the iodine. So this color and this color when you compare it still there is some uh, color uh, present in this point. So that is why we will still add the reaction mixture and get to know about the achromic point of the fungal alpha amylase what we have taken. So in the fifth minute we can see that there is a good uh, change in the color because when compared to the fourth and the fifth minute there is a huge drastic difference in the change in the color. We shall wait for another one more minute and check it out with the drop of iodine to check whether we have reached the achromic point or not. So there is only few seconds so we will be able to see how, what is happening during the sixth minute. So in case if the sixth minute color what we obtain uh, from the reaction mixture is matching with that of the iodine then that becomes the achromic point of the fungal diastase which we have taken as an enzyme source for today's experiment. So we are going to add the next drop for the sixth minute. So we can see down that almost it is nearing the end but still there is a slight reddish color appearance in the center of the drop. So we can continue the reaction still more to see that the drop color matches with that of the color of the iodine. So very simple experiment where the students can understand how the enzymes are acting in the biological system. So for today's experiment we have taken fungal alpha um, amylase or it's called as the diastase which is commercially available. In case if you want to work with the biological samples we can collect the saliva. So we can ask a concerned person who is going to um, collect, I mean, collect the saliva. We can ask them to wash or rinse their mouth with the lukewarm water to make sure that the particles that are present in the mouth are being washed off and then they can take a funnel and then a conical flask and start the collection of saliva. So now we can see that we are into the 7th minute and you can observe that still there is a slight appearance of the color. So we will go with the next one more minute to conclude that that is the economic point for the alpha amylase enzyme. So as I was telling about salivary amylase, so students can collect the saliva and they can um, collect it by keeping a conical flask in ice and the funnel kept with the Wattman filter paper so that you get the crude extract of the salivary amylase. Then you can work out and dilute your enzyme 
as per the requirement and the same experiment can be continued even for the salivary amylase also. So we will see for the next 8th minute. So the 8th minute we can see that the drop of the reaction mixture is going to be added by Nandini Sharma. So we can see that what the so there is okay so now almost we can find that we have reached the end point so we can stop the experiment so at the eighth minute the color of this what we get is almost matching with the color of the iodine which we added earlier so we can finally say that as a result that the achromic point of the fungal alpha amylase which is called as diastase taken for today's experiment its economic point is going to be the eighth minute so what is the final understanding about this experiment is that the alpha amylase which is acting on the starch after complete reaction the end product form will be either the glucose or the maltose which is a monosaccharide and the disaccharide which when they interact with the iodine they won't be able to give you the change in color so that's why it is the achromic point eighth minute is the achromic point for this enzyme what we have taken for the today's experiment thank you all